Okay, so one of the things that's come up in lab is that the double cantilever has been given uh, groups some fits. Uh, so I wanted to go over an example, and in particular, I want to stress the importance of thinking about um, the way the moments work and keeping track of whether they're clockwise or counterclockwise. And to do that, uh, we will look at um, keeping positive and negative moments aligned with whether they're clockwise or, or counterclockwise. All right. So uh, here's our situation. We have two loads on a beam, uh, one that is 200 pounds on the left, one that is 300 pounds on the right. And we have two reactions. Notice that we have a double cantilever here, right? So the cantilever on the left is 10 feet, cantilever on the right is 20 feet. We want to find out what, of course, the reactions are that will balance uh, this beam perfectly. Now, we have uh, a bunch of equations we can use. One is real simple, which is that reaction left plus reaction right has to be equal and opposite to all of the other loads on the beam. So that's 200 pounds and 300 pounds, so that means 500 pounds total. All right, that's great. We know that the two reactions together have to equal 500 pounds, but we don't yet know how that is going to be split up, right? To do that, uh, we, of course, need to go to our moment equations. And what we'll do first is we'll look at the sum of the moments around reaction left. So we'll say sum of the moments uh, left. This is a, a sigma, just a sloppy one. That has to equal zero. And so zero is going to equal. And now we're going to go through and we're going to list all of the moments, right? So we have minus 200 pounds, sorry, we have 200 pounds uh, on the left. We'll start there and we'll work our way right. And notice that it has a 10-foot moment arm about the point that we're looking at, right, the, the reaction left. Now, that is going to go counterclockwise, notice, right? That 200 pounds is at 9 o'clock relative to the left-hand reaction, and it's pushing down towards 6 o'clock, so uh, against the clockwise motion. Now, let's call that positive, right? We could say positive or negative, but... Just to make it easy, let's say that uh, counterclockwise is going to be positive. So that's going to equal 200 pounds, and it's going to have a moment arm of 10 feet. Now, reaction left isn't going to have a moment about itself, or it has a moment arm of zero. Either way, it's, it's trivial. The next force that's going to have a moment around that point is going to be reaction right. Now, we don't know what reaction right is, uh, but we're assuming that it's operating, it's pushing up. And notice that as it's pushing up, it's going from 3 o'clock relative to the point we're interested in to 12 o'clock. So it's actually going counterclockwise as well. So it's going in the same direction as our load on the left, 200 pounds times 10 feet. So reaction right is also going to be positive. We're going to say it's going to be equal to plus reaction right. And this time note that the moment arm is 15 feet. Okay. Now, we only have one other load uh, on the beam. That is the 300 pounds way over here on the right. And we know maybe intuitively that it's going to have to have a negative value, right? This is the 200 pounds times 10 is positive. Reaction right times 15 is positive. So to get us back to zero, we have to have a negative in there somewhere. And in fact, if you look at the direction that it's going, it's going down. It's uh, basically at 3 o'clock relative to our uh, the point that we're interested in. Uh, it is going to be heading towards 6 o'clock. And so in fact, it is going to have a counterclockwise moment, right? which is what we want. So minus 300 pounds times its moment arm around the reaction. That's going to be 15 plus 20 feet, or 35 feet. OK? A uh, little bit of simple algebra. We'll take uh, reaction right times 15. We'll move it over to the other side of the equation. When we do that, we're, taking, we're basically subtracting RR times 15 from both sides. So we'll end up with negative reaction right times 15 feet equals, and now we can multiply, we can find what our moments uh, are in foot-pounds, 2,000 foot-pounds, right? 
And then here, 300 times 35, we've got to get our calculators out. 300 pounds times 35 feet is going to be 10,500 foot-pounds. Oops. So that's going to be minus 10,500 foot-pounds. Okay? Now, we do the math. Minus RR times 15 feet is going to be equal to uh, minus 8,500 foot-pounds. And now note that we can take 15 feet out of both of those. And we get minus RR is going to equal five. Uh, minus 567, and note that the feet cancel out. And we're left with 567 pounds. That's good. We want to figure in pounds. So RR, remember we have negative RR equals negative 567 pounds. So positive RR equals positive 567 pounds. Right? And now we can go back to our first equation. And we find that RL plus, now we have 567 pounds for our for reaction right, uh, that has to equal 500 pounds. And now we have something really interesting, right? If we take the 567 pounds and subtract it from both sides, we get that RL equals minus 67 pounds. Huh? Here's what's going on. Notice that we've got a very, very big force over here, and it has a very, very long moment arm. Uh, and we have, uh, that requires us to have a very, very big force in reaction right to counter it, because it has a very short moment arm. So this force is actually greater, notice, than the combined total of the loads that we're putting on the beam. And RL, instead of going up, actually has to go down. All right? So we have a situation where the teeter-totter is kind of working in an odd way. Uh, it is actually uh, balancing on a fulcrum here in such a way that, here, I'm, this is bugging me, so I'm going to um, see if I can erase it. Yep. It's actually working in such a way that the reaction left is going into tension, right? It's actually having to pull the beam down there, right? So how do we uh, account for that? Well, the way that we've come about that is really by just keeping track of our moments and the directions and making sure that when we're thinking about uh, moments going clockwise or counterclockwise that we're being very consistent and we're assigning positive or negative to a counterclockwise or a clockwise moment throughout the whole uh, equation. When we get double cantilevers like this, we very often see situations where we end up with what are called tension foundations, right? A, a pin connection that's actually pulling down uh, instead of pushing up. Um, if we were to do the, uh, re the moment uh, equilibrium calculations around reaction, right? Um, what we would find is that uh, that's 67 pounds times the 15. Note that it is going the same direction. It is going counterclockwise, same direction as the 200-pound load. But note also that we have a much bigger load over here, 300 pounds, uh, that is going to be putting a clockwise moment uh, around that load. And so that equilibrium equation would make everything work out, right? We would ignore the 567 pounds. We would just have the 200 uh, times 10, the 67 times 15, and the 300 by 20. I'll leave it to you to figure out uh, whether that worked, but notice that it's the Y uh, equilibrium equation that actually gave us the, the negative 67. Uh, okay, I uh, hope that helps. That's a double cantilever seesaw equilibrium equation.